In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. It was not a surprise that Jesus was in his last minutes, his last hours, when he died. It wasn't a surprise that his earthly life was finished, but that those words in, in Greek really mean much more than just, it's done. Jesus was not saying, that's all, folks. Not by any means, because the story continues. And it continues even now to all of us. Another translation of those words, it is accomplished. And that's really what happened. Jesus accomplished something for all of us. He accomplished salvation. Yogi Berra once said, it ain't over till it's over. And with God, it's never really over. So what was finished? Certainly Jesus' earthly life, but what was accomplished? Our salvation. You know, one of my favorite yogiisms is you should always go to other people's funerals. Otherwise, they won't go to yours. My wife once said, said to me, that makes a lot of sense. I said, it does. How, how are you going to... How are they going to go to your funeral if you've been to theirs? But if you're Italian, you understand what that means. There's a sense of duty and obligation as being part of the community. You know, a couple of, a couple of months before Yogi Berra passed away, he was interviewed on the Today Show, and the interviewers said, now, you know, your children recently asked you something. You said, yes. They asked them, Dad... You were born in St. Louis. You played baseball in the Bronx. You live in Montclair, New Jersey. When you pass away, where would you like to be buried? And he said to them, surprise me. Jesus' death upon the cross was not a surprise. His resurrection was a surprise. Even though Jesus told his disciples over and over again, three documented conversations that he has with them in the Gospels. The Son of Man is going to be handed over to sinful men, be crucified, and in three days rise again. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was a complete surprise. But Jesus did not rise from the dead for our sins. He died for our sins. And the great work of our salvation was his precious death upon the cross for all of us. What was accomplished was the forgiveness of our sins, but the end was only the beginning. Easter Sunday morning was not... Easter joy for the 12 disciples. I think they were the most broken people on the planet that Easter Sunday. And it took a long time to process everything. And Jesus didn't just show up once after he died on the cross and wave at everybody and say, don't worry, guys, I'm okay. You know, I've gotten through. No. For 40 days, the Acts of the Apostles tells us that he met with them, that he even ate with them. Sort of a rare experience to, to, to have a regular meal with somebody that's passed away. But that element of surprise continued and was not even understood even after the, um, the ascension into heaven. That was a confusing time as well for them. 
And so they were shaking in their boots, afraid that what happened to Jesus was going to be done to them because the same players were in Jerusalem 50 days later on Pentecost Sunday. And it's only when they receive the power of the Holy Spirit that they're not afraid anymore. So much so that Peter looks out at the crowd and says, this Jesus whom you people crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. It was only on Pentecost that things really got going. There is a story in the life of the church of St. Vincent de Paul. St. Vincent de Paul was on his deathbed at 79 years old. And he said, I've only begun. I haven't finished. Well, St. Vincent de Paul had become a priest for all the wrong reasons. It was about ambition. It was about making money. It was about fundraising for himself and owning property. And it was only after he was traveling on the Mediterranean to another destination that the, the, the ship that he was on was attacked by Berber pirates from Tunisia. And for a period of two years, he was taken as a slave and made to work very hard. That's when his real conversion to Jesus Christ actually happened. And after that conversion experience, the whole nature of his priesthood changed. Vincent de Paul had founded a religious community, the community of the mission, an order of priests that made as one of their obligations the reform of parish clergy. You see, Catholic priests in France and many other places, discipline was lax. They weren't praying. They were going through the motions. It was a business. It wasn't an act of faith, and St. Vincent de Paul would hold weekly meetings that there was crowding, um, standing room only for his conferences for the parish clergy on how to live their priestly life. Vincent de Paul would also go into parishes that were in trouble, and his own mission priests would take over the parish for a time, giving the parish priest in charge a time of refreshment, a time of retreat, a time for conversion, a time for renewal. And while the priest was receiving this precious time of coming to know Christ on a deeper level, so the priests of the mission would be caring for these parishes. At a time when home care did not exist for the poor, sick, and elderly, Vincent de Paul ordered groups of, of laywomen to go into the homes of those who were sick to bring a hot meal, to cleanse the person, to clean their house, to give whatever type of medical treatment they could offer at that time. Um, the, he's, he called them his charities. With St. Jean de Chantal, he formed an order of sisters, the daughters of St. Paul, the original sisters of charity, who were missionaries eventually all over the world. Vincent de Paul, at the end of his life, was unhappy because he didn't think he accomplished anything. I've only begun. I've only begun. When Jesus said, it is finished, it is accomplished, he had only begun. There was so much more that was going to happen. Because if it just stopped, stopped there, if he was just finished there, there would be a no evangelization for the world. And so the resurrection is a surprise. What is accomplished is his death upon the cross for the salvation of the whole world. Rick Warren, a number of years ago, the author of The Purpose Driven Life, was interviewed by Larry King and Larry King asked him, what's an evangelical Christian? And I remember his response very clearly. He said, well, evangelical Christians believe three things. First, they believe that the Bible is the word of God. The second thing that evangelical Christians 
believe is that everything that Jesus Christ said about himself in the New Testament is, is, is true, and he proved it by rising from the dead. And he said the third thing that evangelical Christians believe is that it is our duty to bring that good news to others. I heard that that day and thought, I'm an evangelical Christian, as Catholic as I am. We are on a mission. It is accomplished, but it is not finished. And so it continues, even now. There are so many who need us. There are so many that need our care, our love, our concern, our mission, the good news that we have. There are so many people that need to know our Lord Jesus as we know him. Millions of people enter into eternity every day without Christ. We know who those people are who live their entire lives without Christ. We're related to some of them. They live in our homes. They're our brothers and sisters, our parents, our children. We need to pray, and we need to pray urgently. I always ask people, of all of the people that you care about, who do you not want to see in heaven when you get there? We absolutely want to see everyone. And so if that's true, what is the mission? It is before us. And even us, we don't know how our Christian witness, our Christian faith, our Christian care is going to continue to reach and touch people that we know, even long after we are no longer on this planet. It's about the mission. Jesus would after he said, it is finished. Easter Sunday afternoon, the Great Commission, chapter 28 of St. Matthew's Gospel. Jesus tells them when they're still having doubts, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you to do. But we're not alone, and he's not finished, thank goodness. It is accomplished, but he's not finished. Because he promises us this. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.